Okay, I'm about to open my Bergschaft wool. It comes sealed like this in 500 gram packets, which is uh, very close to one pound. Ooh, looks a little, looks a little seal. Okay, I don't think I've released the air. Isn't that fun? All the air is coming into the... I'm telling you, nothing's going to happen to this wool in transit. I kind of like that. Okay. So this wool is coming into my shop uh, very soon. I have a limited amount of it now, and then I will order larger amounts of it in the coming months. So the neighbors are putting on a new roof. I don't know if it's catching on the microphone. So I'm just going to go ahead and stand close here and give you the instructions. I've got my template right here, but I want to make my calf wider because these are going up higher. So I extended uh, the length on my former uh, template that I used to make my blue athletic shoes, blue and white athletic shoes. And now I'm just going to have to trim the calf area uh, of the bubble wrap. So I'll grab some of my scissors. Go like this. this half. Okay, so at the widest part it's 10 inches across, which should give me plenty. So that is a 20 inch circumference. 10 plus 10. And my leg is 17 at the fattest part. So um, that should give me enough room for shrinkage. And if I go over, I will just trim it when I'm making the tongue. Also, I'm going to uh, make these slightly smaller because this was a heck of a lot of work to uh, felt down my the size of my shoes. So I'm just going to make it just a smidge smaller. And hopefully that'll speed up the process for me. Because I would really love to wear these boots this weekend. In fact, actually, truth be told, I would love to wear these boots tonight. Because I'm going to a concert with my friend. And it'd be super cool to wear my steampunk boots, but that's probably completely unrealistic. But we will shoot for that anyways. So just to be clear, here's our boot template, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six pre um, pre cut out layers, and each layer is approximately 50 grams of wool or 
1.8 ounces. You really need to have those counted up beforehand or else it's really easy to forget how many layers you put on if you get called away or get a phone call or interrupted in any way, shape or form. So do your layers before you start your project. Here's a tip from my student Dan don't push it around okay it's not play-doh if it, it's gonna feel like bread dough a little bit so just you if you push it around you're gonna get little ridges and that's gonna mess you up very lightly just skimming the very top of it you're gonna move your hand across it just barely touching it and tangling up those fibers okay that's going to make your felting process so much easier and so much more productive. Now it's time to flip it. When you go around curves, like at the toe and at the heel, you need to reduce some of the wool. So that you will get a curve without a fold. You don't want a fold right there. See how much nicer that is now? I'm going to have to wet it in order to get it to stick. If the wool's sticking to your hand, then just get out your net. That's what it's there for. And it can be any fabric that uh, does not stick to wool. So nylon, acrylic, basically anything um, man-made that is not a protein fiber will work. This is what it looks like when you have the first layer on. Let's zoom in. And we're just going to repeat. Here we go. The same exact thing. Spray it down. And then you'll curve it over. It's so easy. A child could do it. This has been dry because I was needle felting it and before I did that I'd rinsed out almost all of the soap that was in there. 
So there's barely any soap in here, but that's good. You don't want a lot of soap in there when you start your folding, and that's what we're about to do. We're going to roll this with our ruble and our textured rolling pin so that we can get a very strong um, felt, and then we're also going to have to wet felt in all this needle felted design. This was this is all going to shrink, so it seems quite large now. But once this gets shaped onto the shoe, it's really going to shrink. Have a bamboo um, curtain rod just for or curtain just for extra rubbing texture because the more texture you have, the faster your filling is going to go. I've got my boot that's wet, just damp, and rolled around my textured rolling pin. And I have my textured ruble that grabs the felt as I roll. So I'll just start rolling to make my super strong felt. Now most of the soap is already out of here. And I'm not using hot water just because I feel like I make a stronger felt when I use cold water. But if you want to speed up your process, you can use hot water at this stage. And I'm just going to do this, oh, for a long time. <laughs> Well, probably about 20 minutes and then I'll check it. Um, if you ever get to the point where your um, where your template, your bubble wrap temp, your bubble wrap template or any other template that you're using starts to curl up, you'll know that it's time to cut out your boot and start um, and start felting with more soap. I'm going to put my own foot in there, these are my boots, and we have it all wet and it's still soapy, so you're just going to massage around there uh, like that and kind of squeeze onto your foot. See, there's my foot in there, and inevitably you're going to have extra material up here. Don't worry so much about that because look, I'm going to cut right there in here and I'm going to have a tongue. So a lot of that material is uh, going to be tucked back over here. So just make sure that up here at your toes you're not getting a bunch of wrinkles while you're simultaneously going up and down like this to try to get it tighter. Now there's other things you can do to make it tighter there too. You could put in straps right there. But um, if you're not wanting to do that, you want maybe even to do a muckalek. If you were doing a muckalek and you were not cutting in a tongue, well then it would be really important for you to massage this really well. And the, as you're massaging, just massage out any of those little wrinkles that happen when you go like this. Because <laughs> you're going to get wrinkles doing that. Now, um, the other thing you can do is take it another step and get your tool and roll it and that feels great and it'll make it much faster for your shrinkage all right at this stage I've already um, installed the grommets and the sole of one of the boots and the other boot up here is getting clamped so in a few hours that sole will be all done Listen, if you do not have a grommet setter to set your grommets, you can put holes in using a tool like this. This is designed for leather work. It's a, it's a leather puncher, and each of these little things is a different width. So um, that will allow you, you'll see I've already got some felt in there, that will allow you to put, 
precise holes in your felt if you like or you could put it in a piece of leather and then attach the leather to your shoe for laces and that will be a very secure option I just picked this up at the hardware store you just want to so for zooming in on the shoe you'll see that there's a little bit of fuzziness still um, because of the natural curliness of the wool so what I want to do is kind of get rid of some of this fuzziness and really make the shoe have a really professional nice finish and the way that you do that I mean it looks nice now but um, some of those guard hairs and stuff are still poking in there what you you have two options well three options actually you can shave your shoe to get rid of those uh, extra guard hairs and any other loose hairs that didn't felt you can singe those off with a lighter because um, singeing the wool will get rid of the loose hairs but wool doesn't uh, maintain a flame so you will not burn your shoe it'll just uh, it'll just singe the little tiny hairs and then the flame dies when it hits the actual felted fibers that's kinda cool huh and the other thing that you can do is steam them and when you steam the felt it will cause all of those fibers to really kink up it'll make even a stronger felt and it'll make a smoother finish so that's what we're gonna do today and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my textured rolling pin stick it into the shaft of the boot so that I have something to iron against and I'm not gonna burn my hand with steam uh, I've got to give myself a little bit more cord and then we'll go ahead and we'll start steaming now if you have a professional steamer maybe you're a hat maker um, then use that I just don't have a steamer so I'm using my iron I'm really gonna focus over here on the toe and, and I've noticed if you actually touch the iron to the felt it works best Also, if you used any acid dye on your shoe, I mean, this is all natural, but if you did use any acid dye on your shoe, um, the steaming would really help to give an additional set to your um, dye. So I want to go ahead and just show you the difference between a finished shoe and one that has been felted but is not fully finished. The thinnest shoe, once the sole was put on, was refelted to shape around the sole to get all the contours of the sole. Then it was steamed. Okay, so it has a very solid finish. It's smooth, it's got great shape, it has more strength standing up. It's a really nicely finished boot. Now, here's the same boot that has only had the sole put on. It has not been felted a second time to get the contour of the, of the sole. And it has not been steamed. It's a little floppier and it's a whole lot fuzzier. Hey, thanks for coming by and learning how to make wool boots. If you need anything, remember to check out my shopping cart buttons. So you can click over there and go directly to my Wool Envy shop and get anything you need from soles to glue to even wool coming soon. If you like this, remember to give it a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. If you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe. I upload new videos every Thursday that covers things on wet felting projects, needle felting projects, new no felting projects and dye techniques. Hey, thanks for coming and go out and make something awesome. See you later.